Hey, Joel. Welcome to the His and Her Money Hello, Show. Hello, Joel. Hey, guys. How's it going? Going well. Awesome. We're super glad to have you on the show because you have an incredible story of debt elimination. And we know our audience loves to hear real stories from real people who have paid off a bunch of debt. And so we're glad that you were able to make this happen for us. But before we get into your story, can you just take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody that's tuned in and let them know what you're all about? Yeah, sure. I can do that. And thanks guys for having me. I'm excited to uh, to share this story. Uh, my name is Joel Young, and uh, currently I am most importantly a husband and a, a father to three young boys. Um, and I've got uh, a business that I run here in Cincinnati, Ohio called Jumpstart Video. I do animation work, uh, spokesman work. I do voiceover work, some acting, uh, just a little bit, not nothing serious or, or too big time. Uh, and I, I also run a YouTube channel. And so uh, I'm kind of doing a lot of different things, but uh, that's what I'm doing these days and, and kind of where I find myself. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about the debt that you paid off. Tell our audience how much debt it was and what type of debt was it? Yeah, sure. It was in, in total, it was about $50,000 uh, that my wife and I had. And we've tried to go back and, and obviously we've shared this story several times. So we've uh, always tried to, it's always harder the farther we get away from it to remember what it all was. Uh, but I do know that uh, it included things like a car payment uh, on a brand new car that we never should have bought. It included uh, a decent chunk of credit card debt. Uh, we actually had some personal loans where friends had lent us money. Uh, and of course, we had medical bills um, piled up in there. We had a couple surgeries, uh, some incidents that we didn't expect that just kind of right in the middle of us paying off debt were added onto the pile. Uh, as as uh, I, Mr. Dave Ramsey likes to say, I listen, I'm a Dave Ramsey listener. So he says, Murphy will move into your spare bedroom when you start to pay off debt. And so that's what happened to us. We started out, I think we had about $35,000 in debt, and then it grew to fifty dollars before we were done. So we ended up paying off $50,000 uh, in about 18 months. Wow, $50,000 in 18 months is incredible. I'm curious, though, what made you even go on this journey in the first place? For a lot of people, they're comfortable in their debt because it's such a normal part of society. Everybody's got a couple car notes. Uh, everybody's got credit card debt. Everybody's got a student loan, you know. For you all in the situation that you were in, what was the eye opening moment or what led you guys to want to even attempt to get out of debt in the first place? Yeah, it's a good question. We actually started our marriage pretty much without debt. My wife and I were never credit card users. Uh, and if we did have credit cards, we were the kind that would pay them off at the end of every month. You know, we drove cars that were old and, uh, you know, only replaced cars when we needed to. We didn't really, you know, kind of desire to have nice, shiny things. And, and so we were always actually pretty good looking back on it. We handled our money pretty well. But when we got into trouble, uh, was when life started to happen and then things started to just come at us and and we chose poorly in a couple of scenarios like we we had a car and we moved across the country we moved from Ohio to Florida uh, for my job I was a pastor for about 12 years and so we uh, took a job down in Florida and we bought a car that was a total lemon it it, it literally cost uh, more th more to me in repairs in the first two months than I actually paid for the vehicle and so we thought hey to get out of this vehicle Let's go. Let's go buy a brand new car because they're guaranteeing seven thousand on any trade in, right? You know. So hey, we, that that'll be fine. And so we just made some stupid decisions along the way that we shouldn't have, and we found ourselves kind of in this hole um, that we never expected to be in. And uh, we, we actually, when we were in Cincinnati, uh, went through the process of trying to start a new church, and because it was new, we didn't have a lot of support, and so for a while without really intending to, we kind of lived on credit cards. I mean, we were buying gas and groceries with credit cards and we had a little baby at home. Uh, actually, at the time we ended up, uh, we had two, we had a son that was born while we were starting that church. And so it just kind of piled on and piled on and stupid upon stupid. And uh, we were beginning a series at our church on money management. And I started to preach through this stuff from the Bible. And we actually started using some of, uh, I've already mentioned it once, so I'll just go ahead and say we started mentioned or we started using some Dave Ramsey materials and I was going to lead the church through this and I, I kind of started to prepare myself and I said to my wife we we got to do something about this ourselves like we are not doing well 
in the area of money management. And it, it, it was kind of sad to me because I was one of those guys that had a budget before we were married. Like I actually made a spreadsheet before I got married the summer before. And I said to my wife, this is going to be our budget for living. And, and yet it still slipped away from us because we didn't maintain it. And so we just kind of turned around and found ourselves in a bad spot and, and then realized that we need needed to fix this. So it kicked us into gear. It kicked our adrenaline up. We kind of got our ears up and said, okay, what do we have to do to get out of debt? And I can't remember where the question started or where it ended, but I'll just kind of go to this next section of the story uh, in that once we decided to get out, we were kind of in a difficult scenario because we were a one income family. Uh, my wife stayed at home with our two sons at that time. Um, I was a pastor, so my income was fixed. We, I couldn't work overtime. You know, I wasn't going to get huge salary raises every year, and I wasn't going to work my way up a ladder. It was pretty much in the spot I was going to be. So we realized that if we wanted to get out of debt, we either had to cut our lifestyle dramatically or earn more money on the side. And we actually ended up doing both. Um, we decided that we were going to cut our lifestyle way down, um, not buy anything else, not go on any more vacations, um, just kind of live uh, a meager lifestyle and then begin to earn money on the side. And so that was kind of the beginning of it um, and the plan that we took to kind of get started. Awesome. So talk about the mindset that you guys had to put yourself in and say, you know what, we need to knock out this debt. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it was it was hard at first because you had to get excited about something that wasn't going to happen in two or three months. You know, I, I'm one of those guys that gets really uh, focused and driven. And then after a month, I'm like, can we do something else, please? Because I am not <laughs> if this isn't over in a month then I'm not interested. And so it was really hard because you were driving towards a goal that was way, way out there. And and knowing that $50,000 was pretty darn close to what we earned in a year, uh, it was kind of daunting to look at that and say, we're going to pay that off um, and, and do that in a short period of time. And so we really had to get uh, intentional about being uh, each other's accountability partners. And we made those first budgets and we kind of sat down together. And, and my wife, she's um, you know, a sweet, loving, supportive woman. And she has always kind of let me handle those things and kind of said, you know, um, she trusted me and, and she made sure things were in line, but she didn't really want to know the nuts and the bolts. But when we started, I said, you've got to know the nuts and the bolts. And so um, at first she was kind of resistant, but I think now that we've been in this and through this together, she, she appreciates uh, me kind of showing her those things that she's not that interested in because now whether she's interested or not, she knows and she's a part of that. And even to this day, we go over a monthly budget stuff together and, and she says, I need to add this in the budget. We need to adjust it here. And, and uh, you know, she gets to manage a lot more of the household dollars than I do. So it's really important to me that she was involved. So I think that was really the first time in our marriage that we sat down and got on the same page. And it wasn't just me going, here's the plan. Let's stick to it. it was, she was with me. And I think that made all the difference. Oh, now, one of the unique parts of your story is what you did on the increased income side, because a lot of people find themselves right now asking themselves or pondering that that thought that you had. Well, we either have to cut our expenses, our lifestyle, or we're going to have to create extra income on the side. And you said that you and your wife did both. So talk to us about some specifics as to what you did, because I know you created a side hustle that was kind of out of the box. You know, a lot of people are like, man, well, what am I good at? What can I think of? I, you know, I don't have any skills that's marketable, but you were able to kind of brainstorm and come up with some out the box ideas. We'd love to hear more about it. Yeah, no, that it's true because one one of the things that was discouraging to us was that we didn't live, we weren't these people that would go out and spend a lot of money on clothes or we didn't go out to eat a lot. So we didn't waste a lot of money before we started getting out of debt. So there really wasn't a whole lot to cut other than maybe some grocery budget to say like, you know, let's just eat peanut butter for a month or something. Um, so we knew we had to create more income. That was the side we were going to be on. And uh, it was actually my wife's idea that got us started. We had used for some creative projects, um, we had used some voiceover talent to uh, finish some videos. And I was into the arts and into uh, you know graphic design and a lot of this stuff. And so I was finishing up a video project and I hired a voiceover talent to do some work for me. 
and we got the stuff back and we're like, wow, this is, this is pretty good. And my wife just kind of commented off the cuff. She said, yeah, that's good. But like, you could do better than that. Right. And, and we were like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, I could do better than that. And, and, uh, I didn't want to use my voice on the project cause we were going to be using this and people would know it was me. And so I said, yeah, but I can't do it. And she goes, well, what if you did what she's doing? And I was like, well, what do you mean? She said, you know, sell your voiceovers. Like if you could do this better than, it was almost like a challenge. Like if you could do this better than her, why don't you do it? And, um, you know, being a musician in a former life, I already had all the equipment I needed. I mean, just a laptop and I had a, a microphone sitting in the closet that hadn't been touched in years. And so I just kind of took the challenge. I, I created an online post and listing on a on a gig website, uh, started to sell. And, and the goal was, Hey, just uh, create enough money to pay a bill. Like, you know, let, let's pay, uh, the cell phone bill with, with your, you know, in make enough to pay the cell phone bill, make 90, hundred dollars a month. And we're like, wow, that would be, can you imagine if we didn't have to pay for cell phones? And so we started out and the first month, like out of nowhere, we literally made $400. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like we, we invested no money. I, I did no training and it was like from A to Z all in one month. It started and it went and it just kept on rolling. And it went from me doing like two or three voiceovers a night to 10 or 15 voiceovers a night. Then the next month it doubled again from like 400 to $800. And we're starting to scratch our heads going, holy cow, like this is for real. And then my customers started asking me for other things other than voiceovers because the way that I had advertised my services was just like this. I'd, I'd made a video that said, hi, my name's Joel. I'll, I'll do a voiceover for your company, for your business, to advertise your product for the radio, whatever it is. And people were coming to me saying, hey, um, I don't want a voiceover. I want a video of you. And, and, you know, and, and I'll never forget the very first message that I got about that. I said no to. The guy came to me and said, I've got an asphalt company, real exciting subject matter, um, and I want a, a video for my website. Just says, hey, we're, uh, I can't even remember, uh, Bob's Asphalt or something like that, but, and paving, and you know, we want you on the front page. And I said, no, that's nice, but I don't really do that because I said no because I didn't have a camera. And then I turned around and, and I thought, well, what the heck did you shoot that on? And I, and I shot it on this, my iPhone, something that everybody has. And so I emailed him back the next day and I said, I've thought it over, I'll do it. And so I created another online listing for video services. And um, that next year, I began to sell more videos than voiceovers, but together in the very first year with no debt, no startup costs, just using things in my closet and maybe upgrading a little here and here or there, I made $35,000 with an iPhone and a 10 year old recording microphone. And it was literally totally unexpected. I didn't set out to start a business. I didn't set out to do what we did. We just set out to pay a cell phone bill. And when we were hustling, things just kind of happened. I, I think it's just kind of a testament to what happens when you want something and you go after it and just kind of follow the doors as they open. You know, it's not something I designed and certainly not something I intended, but I can't say that I fell backwards into it because we hit it while we were running forward. So it was uh, an unexpected blessing and uh, something that, that really changed the game for us because without that extra income, we wouldn't have been able to get out of debt um, that quickly. And, and it certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have been, uh, you know, uh, the opportunities wouldn't have been uh, the way that they, they actually were. Now I know you have everybody's full attention yeah. now. When, when you said, said <laughs> like, $35,000 a year. Now you said a gig site. Now this was fiverr.com. I believe it was correct. Yeah. This was this was Fiverr.com, yeah, and this was back when Fiverr was uh, about a year old when I started selling, and back then you literally had to sell everything for five dollars a service, and so it was. It's different now. You they've changed the platform. You can charge a little more. Um, it, it's evolved, but back then you were selling things five dollars at a time. And so, you know, if I wanted to make 50 bucks, I had to sell 10 projects or 10 gigs to make 50 bucks. So I was doing a lot of quantity um, and, and it, it, it took a lot of time, um, but it was well worth it. I mean, it was something that, um, you know, I can look back on now and, and, and go, you know, 
Thank God I'm through it because I don't want to ever work like that again. I was working eight hours a day, getting home at five or six o'clock and then working till midnight, one, two, three in the morning, getting up and doing it again the next day and um, pretty much solid for, for 18 months until we got there. Well, look at the result. You're yeah. debt free. Your family's out of debt as a result of your hard work. Now, for somebody who's kind of you, you, we threw the name Fiverr out there. They're like, what in the world is that? You know, you said the platform's kind of different now. Can you kind of give the people that's listening an idea of what Fiverr is, the types of things that they could, you know, potentially sell and make money on there as a side hustle? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Fiverr is really, it's become known as a place to, to purchase creative services. Now there's a lot of different types of services on Fiverr that are offered. Um, last I heard there, there were over a million gigs offered there. Um, but basically it's, it's a, it's a way for people who have creative, um, talents to share their talents with others and for other people to buy them in a format that's easy to understand. And, and it's very similar to like, shopping on Amazon. You simply go to a listing page. Someone says, here's what I will do. Here's how much it'll cost you. You can click add to cart, pay for your purchase, just like on Amazon. And it adds it to that person's queue. They then complete it in the promised timeline. They deliver it to you, you approve it. And so it's a really interesting system and cycle um, that allows people that, that offer creative services kind of the opportunity to reach a worldwide audience. Like I've worked with people in over a hundred different countries. I'm approaching my 10,000th, I don't know if that's a word, over 10,000 projects uh, now in, in about four years. And it is it's something that's really opened a lot of doors. And so anything from copywriting to logo design to, you know, obviously there's uh, people that do work for broadcasting, for radio, some for television. I, I do animation work now, um, you know, explainer videos, a lot of things that ended up on YouTube. I've even done work for clients like Guitar Center, Home Depot, um, Costco, Sam BJ's Wholesale, uh, Allstate, State Farm, the NCAA, people like that who purchase through a platform like Fiverr. Or sometimes it's a marketing agency who works for those companies that are purchasing through Fiverr. But um, basically, it's a place where even without a, a large portfolio, you can show your true talent and have people interested in buying from you based on that because you get to post examples of your work and you know just like everybody else i started out with zero and had to show people that i was you know worth clicking that buy button for um and it's not something you have to have a huge portfolio listed to to have a, sh a shot at everybody has the same shot it's a search it's a search engine there's algorithms it's just like google it's like ranking a website you get in there and hustle and, and put good quality content out there and um, your customers leave you good reviews and eventually it, it pays off and, and uh, pays dividends. Pays dividends. Yeah. One thing that I love about your story is that you didn't even have experience in this area and you just started, you know? So the key is just start. I think sometimes we disqualify ourselves because we think that we're not good enough or we're not experts. But here it is. You have had some large companies um, ask you to actually do a voiceover or whatnot for them without experience. Your experience is your work. So I think that that's great. Um, I think that's great, great, great story. Um, now, are there any other platforms, if we have anyone that may be listening that may be interested in starting something like this, we know about Fiverr. We've also done videos on Fiverr as well, too, and gave that a chance ourselves for a little experiment, and it really does work. Um, but are there any other platforms that you can recommend that possibly other people can go on and get work? You know, I, I before I started working on Fiverr, I also did a lot of work on Craigslist. I, I would go out to their gig section. People would post on there, hey, I, I did some uh, kind of entry-level web development. I'd build websites. I'd do graphic design. People would locally would post on there. I need somebody to design a business card, and I want to work with someone I can shake hands with. So I did that. And and there's, there's other crowdsourcing sites out there. Um, Honestly, because of the success I've seen with Fiverr over the years, I didn't have to go looking for a lot of them. Um, for voice actors, there's things like Voice Bunny. I've done some work on Voice Bunny. There's Voice Garden, Voices One, Two, Three. You know, a lot of similar sites that are basically crowdsourcing sites where you can post a profile and um, kind of people will come and look through the list and choose based on your samples. But uh, you know, that I think that exists for a lot of different. 
um, areas, you know, like there, if you're a graphic designer, there's tons of logo design tournament style websites like 99 designs and, and things like that, where people compete for, um, a, a project or compete for a job. And so the open marketplace on the internet is growing every single day. And, and even though I'm not aware of a ton of different options, I know that really, no matter what niche you're in, there's a place to sell it to somebody online and there's a way to market it and a way to get it out there that really only requires you going out there and looking, you wanting to do it bad enough and, and wanting to find a solution hard enough because honestly, what really held us back is for years we would say, oh, you know, we would love to, you know, have nicer cars and have them paid off, but we just don't make enough money. Uh, that's really the worst excuse in the world because I don't make enough money is not the reason why you're in debt. It's because your spending habits are wrong and you're not intense enough to want to get out of debt. And when you're intense enough, when you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to do it. It doesn't matter if it's delivering pizzas in the evening. You know, you don't have to have a, um, that's the one I hear a lot as I share my stories. People say, well, I'm not a, I'm not a voice artist. I'm, I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not creative at all. Well, you can go deliver pizzas and you can go cut grass. And those are certainly things that I've done in my lifetime, even as an adult, um, to, to get where I need to go. And there's tons of different things you can do. It's just all about the hustle and the desire. And it just so happened that I had some existing talents that made me say, maybe I could try this. And if it didn't work, I probably would have ended up delivering pizzas because we wanted out bad enough. We were ready to do what it, it took. And this just happened to be the, the door that opened. So we walked through it. There it is. You said it. You yeah. want it out bad enough. You and your wife were completely fed up and you were willing to do whatever it takes. Now, $50,000 in 18 months is, Incredible. wow, a big deal. But I'm sure it wasn't all peaches and cream. Uh, I, I'm willing to bet that there were some obstacles that popped up along the way. So can you kind of talk us through some of the hurdles that you had to jump over and you know how you were able to persevere through it all? Sure. I've got... I had some really stupid things that I did in the midst of this, but the worst one that I that I did in the midst of our debt snowball get out of debt journey was uh, I was trying to do some home repair myself, and I, and contrary to the story, I'm a pretty handy guy. Okay, I know my way around power tools, and uh, I was doing some plumbing in the kitchen, and I was replacing a little tiny piece on the faucet, and I was trying to pry a plastic piece out of the end of an aerator to replace the aerator on the end of my sink. And instead of going to the garage to get a tool to do it that probably would have made it successful, I pulled a butter knife out of the kitchen sink or out of the kitchen uh, drawer and decided to pry this out with a butter knife. And as I did, I stuck the butter knife right through my hand right here and it almost came out on the other side. It severed the flexor tendon on my thumb and I couldn't move my thumb at all. I started to freak out and I'm like, oh no. I tried to walk it off and that didn't work. Um, so we went to the hospital and it turns out, yeah, I, I severed the tendon. The tendon creeped all the way to here. It was really uh, gross and weird. But that surgery ended up costing me, I think it was over $5,000 for the, the emergency room visit, the surgery. And, all, and this is in the middle of us getting out of debt. And I was like, man, this is, you talk about stupid tax. This is stupid tax because that was 100% my fault. And no one else caused that. It was me being dumb and I almost cut my thumb off and, and we paid for it, but we, we paid it off and we got out and, and that just was rolled into the amount. And, um, you just would never guess that something like that would happen to you as you're trying to get rid of debt. Just, it just happens. So, um, that that might be the biggest uh, obstacle we had in the middle of it because it was like just when you seem to be getting traction, it's like, boom, here's some more debt right on top of you. No, I think that we've heard it all, but I don't think that we've heard that. <laughs> that was a hit money first. That took the spot right there. My goodness, thank God your thumb is still intact, but a yeah, butter knife? Thank you, Dr. Jones. You know, yeah, like you never would think that a butter knife can actually sever like that, but it can't. You know, wow. And so now when I cut my steak, I'm really careful. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Talk about an obstacle for sure. You guys overcame it. So I think that that's so important that you guys overcame that. What would you say have been some of the important factors that have kept you guys on this path um, of becoming debt-free? 
You know, I think the most important thing was that we both, my wife and I, both had the same goal. And, and, and truthfully for us, one of our goals when we were living in Florida, um, you know, being a pastor was difficult because it didn't, it meant that we didn't get to choose where we lived. And, and we kind of just had to go where uh, my job took us. And, and we lived, I can't even remember, we've lived in, in about 15 different houses and 12 different years of marriage. We're living in our fourth home that we purchased. So we've owned four homes. We owned two homes for almost a year at one point. Um, we had some really difficult times just kind of moving all over the place. And when we lived in South Florida near Miami, we were about 1,300 miles away from our family here in Cincinnati. And so one of the things as we were getting out of debt that we said is that, you know, it, this could open doors for us to move back closer to home. Uh, it could open up the opportunity for us to get our, our young boys uh, back closer to home, which, you know, was a real um was a real desire for for both of us, especially for my wife. She has a very tight knit family, and she wanted to be close. Uh, and and I, so did I. You know, we wanted to, to raise our kids around their aunts and their uncles and their cousins and their grandmas and their grandpas. And so uh, that, it was really important for us to kind of look ahead in the future and say, if we were debt free, what could we do? And, and that was, I think, the biggest thing that kept us together, uh, that kept us on this path. And, uh, you know, my wife is the kind uh, that, that you know, I think God gave me her on, on purpose and, and God gave her me on purpose because she's so generous, she would give away every dime we've ever earned. And uh, I'm, I'm not exactly stingy, but I'm a little smarter with my money than to give it all away. And so um, one of the things we wanted to do was be debt free so we could be more generous. And you just, you can't be generous when you're broke. And, you know, opportunities come along, people are in need and you want to help. And you hate saying, I can't because you feel trapped and you feel like you can't participate in life the way you want to or, you know, show people support the way you want to. And so it's kind of all those goals wrapped up in the one, I think, that kept us on track to say, you know, we want to be generous. We want to live life on our own terms and, and not be dictated to uh, and to kind of be able to have the freedom to choose where we live where we work, how we work, all these different things. It was just all rolled up in the one. And, and there wasn't necessarily anything uh, bad about our lives. We had a great life. It's just we saw that, you know, being debt free would be better. And so that, that really kind of kept us together uh, when things were tough and, and when things were hard. Um, and believe you me, with two little kids at home uh, and a guy in the corner of the bedroom trying to do voiceovers at, you know, bedtime going, hey, everybody should be quiet out there. My wife did a whole lot more than I did in those 18 months. <laughs> so the first thing she did when we moved was said, you need a studio that's out of the house. You need to go away so that we don't have to, you know, be quiet 10 hours a day. <laughs> the Sunday Night Sit Down is being brought to you by our friends at Policy Genius. That's your go-to stop to meet all of your insurance needs because they have a totally free tool on their website where all you have to do is put in your information and you will get instant quotes from multiple reputable insurance providers so that you can make the best decision possible when it comes time to purchase insurance. To find out more details, all you have to do is go to hisandhermoney.com slash policy genius. Now, you mentioned that you come from a, a close knit family. And for a lot of people, when they get on this journey, uh, they, they hear voices from outside, family and friends that are kind of talking them out of it because it's such a foreign concept to so many people. Yeah. What was the reaction like from your family and friends as you all were attempting this incredible goal of getting out of debt? Yeah, you know, I don't I don't know that my family ever realized how um how much we were doing to get out of debt when we were doing it. It wasn't like a we didn't make an announcement and say we're getting out of debt just so you know. Um, but I actually had a brother, an older brother, that uh, went through this whole program and this whole process um, before me and, and did some crazy things that only now do I really understand. Like he had a really expensive Tahoe, Chevy Tahoe, a nice truck, and he sold it and got this beater um, that was just – it had rust on it. And, it. and at the time, I'm like, why would you sell that to buy this? 
And I didn't realize that he got rid of tens of thousands of dollars of debt when he sold that Tahoe. Um, and and I, I only now begin to realize what kind of sacrifices that him and his wife were making. They they got rid of their consumer debt, consumer debt years before we even started this. And so um, we weren't necessarily driven to do it because of that. But uh, I think because of that, we also had people in our lives that understood and that, that got it. And we had uh, you know friends down in Florida that were uh, on a similar journey. They were doing similar things, trying to get their their debt under control because, you know, honestly, everybody in their late 20s, early 30s has got the same problem. They've all got student loans and car debt and sometimes a house they can't afford. And and, and it's it's a cultural thing where we've come to expect that we deserve these things or we need to have these things or, you know, we we need the things that our parents have, only we need them after five years of marriage. It took our parents 35 years of marriage to get there. So we need the bigger house, the bigger, the nicer car, the bigger TV. Um, and, and so a lot of my peers were in the same boat of, oh my goodness, I, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm up to my, my ears in debt. And so, uh, we had a lot of positivity around it. Um, though it, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to everybody when the answer to, can you hang out tonight is always no. I mean, eventually they quit asking and, uh, knowing that, Hey, Joel goes home from work and Joel works. Um, that's that's kind of how it worked for a while. Just uh, it made it all the more amazing that I still had friends when we were done. So <laughs> we were excited when we got done and and got to go to movies and, and we did fun things. But we we tried to limit them so we could get this paid off as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, you guys were able to do that in eighteen months. So walk us through that moment when you guys paid off that last debt payment. That last debt payment, that was uh, that was a tough one because it was actually a gift. Somebody uh, we had gotten into some trouble and and um, owed some money real quick that we didn't have, and we had some friends say, "We're just going to give you this money," um, and and they were very well intentioned about it and very um, honorable about it. They they tried to bless us, uh, but. Me being me, I, di- I didn't want that as a gift. I, I always told them, I said, I'm going to pay you back eventually, even when I knew I'd- I didn't have the money or didn't have any idea how I would. And so because of that, we kind of put that at the end of our debt snowball. And uh, I remember giving them that envelope and they were kind of like, you don't have to do this. And I said, yeah, but I get to now. I- we get to actually do this because – we stayed the course, we, we followed the plan and we succeeded. And this is the end of the, this is the finish line for us. So, um, you know, it wasn't one of those things where we're like, ah, we're glad to get rid of you guys. You know, it was, it was kind of like, this is neat because people that blessed us, we now get to say, you know, go bless somebody else with this because, uh, they didn't mean it to be alone, but we wanted to make sure that we did right by the people who put faith in us and, and followed through and, and paid back that debt. So, um, it was a really extra special uh, thing when we got to do that at the end and um, kind of do some really two really great things at one time. Now, that's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. So compare life now to back when you were in debt. How does life feel now? What's different? Mm-hmm. Everything. I mean, we we don't worry about what happens um, when when things go wrong at the house. We've got an emergency fund. So, you know, when the car breaks down, we don't worry about it. We've already got the money for it. Um, you know, when, when we want to take a vacation, we think about where and when, not how much. Um, and then we just save up for it and make sure we have enough cash to go do it. Uh, we bought two used cars, but new to us cars this year, both with cash. And they were both kind of upgrades from, you know, the older cars that we had been driving. And I, I just looked at that and looked at my wife at the end of the year and said, had we not been out of debt, had we not learned to save, we would never have had the cash saved up to buy these two cars. Um, you know, we added a child to our family this year. So we needed that extra row of seats. You know, we didn't buy a minivan. So we, we had to search around for that third row uh, SUV that was cool. And so we looked long and hard and, and it was, it was nice to be able to say, we're not putting payments on this. In fact, I remember sitting at the dealership and they're, they're sitting here saying, you know, oh, we'd like to negotiate with you, but we, you know, credit is where we make all our money. And I said, well, you're not going to make any money on this guy then. You're just going to lose it because I got money here and I'm, this is how we buy cars in our family. Um, it just kind of blew their minds that someone would save the money to buy a car before they bought it. And so just the whole outlook in life, you know, it, it removes a lot of the stress, anxiety, and worry. 
Uh, doesn't mean we don't have any money worries anymore and we can just go around throwing money from the rooftops. We still budget every single month. We still mind our spending. You know, we drive, like I said, we got new vehicles. My truck's got 160,000 miles on it. Newer than the one I had before, uh, it had 205,000, but we don't go out and buy, you know, $50,000 vehicles and, and, you know, my wife doesn't spend $200 a month on clothes. We, we still live within, uh, below our means actually, so that we can save and be generous. And, um, in fact, we, one of the perks of us getting out of debt, um, though this was never really the point of us getting out of debt, it was always something in the back of our mind that we said, if we were out of debt, we could do this, uh, was we just actually, uh, I actually delayed this interview by a couple of weeks because we just got back from China and we adopted our, our third son, uh, from China just a couple of weeks ago. And we were able to cash flow that adoption, uh, completely about 95% of that ourselves. We had some really generous people that contributed to it in our church there towards the end. So, um, it was really nice. And we knew that, while we were in debt, we could never even consider adopting. I mean, we we talked about it for years, but it's a it's a massive expense, and we knew that if we were in debt, that would never happen. And so, and now we just kind of get to enjoy this blessing in our lives because we were able to get out of debt, we were able to get on a plan, we were able to save up for it for a couple years, and then when we knew we had the money, we could start that process. And so, um, there's just so many more things. And now my wife's already talking about adopting the next one. <laughs> so. Congratulations, you guys. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. So it just it just changes the way you look at life. You know, it it changes the way you view um, work, and and it changes the way that you view your future. Because now, you know, we spent most of our twenties struggling financially, and we didn't almost at all contribute to our retirement. So now in our 30s, we're, we're talking about retirement. We know what we need to do to actually retire with dignity one day and, and meet the goals that we have for ourselves. And so I, I'm happy that we're on a plan. And when we were in debt, we couldn't even think about those things. You know, it's like saying, you know, the house is on fire. Do you want to remodel the kitchen? No, the house is on fire. And now we can look at remodeling the kitchen. You know, we can look at um, not physically, literally, figuratively, we're remodeling the kitchen. Kitchen's fine. If my wife is watching this, the kitchen's fine. We don't need to fix it. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just nice to have the, the relief of pressure and, and to be able to have the opportunity to be blessings to other people. There's, you know, instances where we've been able to give now and do things that we couldn't have thought about when we were in debt. Uh, and that that means a lot to us because we think that, um, you know, we don't own anything. God owns it all and, and we just get to manage it. And he's a, a generous God. So we want to be generous people and um, and be more generous as time goes on. So what would you say is the biggest life lesson that you learn during this process? That's a great question. Uh, I think the biggest lesson that I personally learned was that there's really nothing that's unattainable in life if you don't, if you want it bad enough. Uh, it's just something that I look back on and I say, you know, the the career that I have now, the life that we live now, the old me, the, the, the 25-year-old me would have sat back and cried a river about it and said, oh man, you know, life is just tough. We don't make enough money. There's no way out. I've got a Bible college degree. What else can I do with that? Um, just kind of felt trapped and defeated. But the truth is, I could use the things that I actually learned in that degree. Uh, I could use the things that I learned in my 12 years of ministry. I could use the things that I'm naturally gifted at and do something with my life that got me out of the hole that I was in financially. And so I, I learned that there's really nothing I can't do if I want it bad enough and hustle hard enough. And it's caused me to do some some things that that I would have never attempted before, you know, and now I just kind of look at those things as the next step in the journey, the next challenge ahead. And I don't say, well, you could never do that. You know, I say, well, how long would it take me to learn that instead? Um, you just kind of get used to um, that mentality of not, you know, um, what can I do, but what can I do with enough time, with enough knowledge, with enough enough research and support? You, you see that almost everything's possible. There's very little that's out of our reach with the amount of technology and and uh, you know just the the world being the way it is, the internet being such a phenomenal resource and tool. I just think about the things that my kids can do, and I'm trying to teach my kids now. You don't need to fit into a box. You know, I'm even telling my boys. 
You don't have to go to college. Like mommy and daddy are saving for that. You don't have to go. You can do whatever you want to do, and you probably don't need a degree to do it by the time you get there. In fact, all my peers have tens of thousands of dollars of college debt, and a lot of them aren't even working in the field they studied in. So, you know, it's just a matter of wanting it bad enough, hustling hard enough. And I'm not against college. I like college. I want my kids to go to college. Reed and Cooper, go to college. And Maxwell, go to college. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, it's just changed the way I think about life and and the way we kind of approach um, living life and, and raising our kids and um, just everything, really. We believe that financial literacy is one of the biggest components of getting yourself to a better place financially. So what would be some books that you would recommend to people to read if they're trying to learn a little bit more about how to handle their money? Certainly. Well, I, you probably guessed since I've mentioned him two or three times already, I'm an avid Dave Ramsey podcast listener. So above reading books, if you're not a book reader, listen to a podcast um, three hours every single day for free. Over 500 radio stations you can listen to. I don't know what they are because I listen on the podcast. But um, Dave Ramsey has is, is got a solid plan. I believe the baby steps will work for anyone. They've worked for millions of people. Um, and so I obviously started out reading that book and little bits and pieces of it. Um, my wife and I have never been through Financial Peace University, which is kind of their class to go along with it. But we read portions of the book and kind of applied it. And listening to the podcast, you can pick it all up. Uh, I also read his book about uh, business, Entree and Leadership, that kind of got me started. And um, John Acuff's book, Start, uh, really kind of uh, kick-started my journey into this this whole um, extra income side of things, kind of made me think outside the box and say, what could I do to earn an income? Uh, and then one of my favorite books of all time, and I'm ashamed that I can't remember who wrote it, but you can go look it up. It's called The $100 Startup. Uh, it's just a book of stories. Yeah, it's just a book of stories about people who have started businesses with next to nothing. And and really, if there's anything I want to advocate is that you can go start a business without a loan. You don't need a business loan to start. And people would argue, well, how do I start a medical practice? Start small. Do, do things that you can do now. Um, there's something you can do to earn an income that doesn't require you taking out a loan that you already have the skills and the resources for. Like I said, you know, this is one of the greatest resources the world has ever known in every single one. One of us has one in our pocket, so you could do something with that. But um, I can't even remember the question. So also books. Yeah, those are those are three that I read um, that were huge for me uh, and and really kind of launched me into the next phase and and certainly gave me the financial literacy that I needed because a lot of this stuff I just didn't know. You know, it's it's shameful that they didn't teach us this stuff in high school. Uh, and the most financial literacy that I had as a, as a teenager was my mom setting me down and teaching me how to balance a checkbook, which I learned how to do by hand with the ledger. Um, and so uh, good credit to my mom. She got me started on good financial literacy, literacy, but no one ever taught me how to budget. No one ever taught me how to, um, you know, how to save for things in the future that were unpredictable and, and things that were irregular expenses. And so um, I think Total Money Makeover is a great way to to start that journey. And even if there's other people you want to listen to or, or kind of mix in there, there's a lot of good stuff out there you can get your hands on. So doing anything I think, you know, would be, would be helpful. So encourage that person that may be listening right now that may be a little discouraged. They don't know if they can actually become debt free. What would you say to them right now? I would say you can't become debt free until you want to. Or, or you decide you're going to, because that's really the first step. You have to decide that you need to do this badly enough. You want to do this badly enough before you actually put together a plan that will work. Because like I said, in my early 20s, I would just sit back and say, well, I can't do that because of this. And I would make excuses. And I, I think a lot of people disqualify themselves from getting out of debt because of whatever circumstance they're in. But you know, one of the great things about listening to that podcast every day is I get to hear stories uh, of people people who have paid off enormous amounts of debt, a lot of times with small salaries. In fact, I can remember, I'm not afraid to admit this. I told my wife this and she was like, really, you did that? But I can remember listening to that podcast when we were getting out of debt and they would do a debt-free scream every hour where people would you know, come on the radio and they would say, here's how much we paid off and here's how much we made. And they'd scream. And I kid you not, 33-year-old grown man, I'd cry every single time that I heard a debt-free scream. I'd be in my car. I'd be like, it's going to be me one day. You know, I'm going to do it. And, and it's true because it gives you hope. And, and so 
I think it's made me realize that it doesn't matter what your income is, what your talent or skill level is, what your situation is, there's something you can do right now to take a step forward and to get out of the situation you're in. Now, you may not get out in six months or 18 months like we did, but you can take a step towards getting out today. And so all it takes is that first step to start getting out um, and, and you realize just how much you want this. Uh, it kind of tests your metal a little bit. And so, you know, I would just say, take your, like you said, take your first step today. It, even if it's a mistake, even if it's a misstep, take the first step today because without the first step, you can't take the second step. And it's just one of those things that, that builds on itself and you grow in confidence as you go. That's why they call it the snowball because it gets bigger and bigger and goes faster and faster as you go down the hill. Um, there's something you can do to get some momentum today. So just start, do something, give it a try, um, even if it's little. Great advice, Joel. So tell everybody about your website and how they can connect with you. Yeah, well, I think the easiest way to connect with me is on my YouTube channel. I'm there all the time. I post videos almost every single day. It's youtube.com slash Joel Young TV. Uh, my website is joelyoung.me, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Joel Young, and I'm more active on Instagram, which is at Joel the Young. Uh, and I, I'm just kind of active all over there, but I, I like to share the uh, the adventures that our family is having. Obviously, we shared some about our, our adoption and just the things that we're doing in life, and as a family on the YouTube channel. So it's a great way to connect, a great way to continue to, uh, if you're interested in hearing more from me, which I know can be a whole lot, but uh, it, it's there almost every single day. And I uh, would appreciate you guys come check it out. Thank you. Enjoy it. Well, Joel, your story is incredible. And uh, I know our audience is totally inspired by the journey that you and your family went on. So we're really appreciative of you taking time out of your busy schedule to share it with our audience today. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to share.